All right, let's go. Number five, your summer NBA characters of note, your notables. Number five is Jalen Brunson at number five. You can make this a group post. You could include the entire Knicks front office and whoever they have been working with during this tampering time, like, you know, World Wide West, whoever. I love it. To sign Jalen Brunson four years. Uh, 104 mil, all of it's guaranteed, and they hired his brother, and it seems like that this deal was agreed to in, like, 1989, <laughs> and, I, like, I, it, it, I, I, I like that just, I like that we're getting closer to a place where people are like, whatever your fine is, who cares? No one cares. Like, just, so I, did I like, they, they hire his brother and his dad or just his dad? Was it his dad and not his brother? It's Rick. Yeah. So they oh, got Rick okay. Brunson okay, on the gotcha, staff. Gotcha. And then to add a little bit of uh, another layer to the cake, you've got Leon Rose who runs the Knicks. He, he, his son is Jalen's day to day guy, uh, day to day agent. So you have Leon Rose and his son, and then Rick Brunson and his son. So it's just like a Steinbeck novel. You just get all these generations <laughs> of families together, and you pay them. It goes 25. even deeper. Leon Rose's first client was Rick Brunson. Right. Who was brought to him by World Wide West because that's like one of his oldest friends. And then uh, Jalen Brunson, the, Leon Rose's son, it's his first client, I think. So right. it's a double first client situation. That's why the Mavs got mad when they had that playoff game and they all sat like right at midcourt <laughs> in awesome seats. Yeah. <laughs> it was the most blatant tampering we've had. I think we even joked about it on our podcast that week. We've never seen anything that, like that. The combination of that, and what did you get all upset about? Danny Ainge sitting close to Will Hardy? <laughs> oh, it wasn't just that he sat close to Will Hardy. <laughs> It was what he saw when he sat close to Will Hardy. I got to admit, I love that you got upset about that, but it's also like, if that's true, did Danny Ainge like think hard about the jazz coaching deal at all? Or was he just like, you know, I sat 20, 10 yards from this guy during the playoffs. I think he could coach the team. Or is it somebody he was thinking about anyway? And then the Celtics are like, Danny, you should come to one of the finals games. He's like, great. Yeah. I'd love to. Why don't you put me in the... I'll sit with Wick and those guys. And meanwhile, he's just there to scout Will Hardy on the Celtics dime. And then gets, he gets poached. Anyway, uh, what? so what else with Brunson fascinated you, Tyler? I think the thing that I kept thinking about was, would it be as big of a deal? And I'm not talking about the numbers. Like, would, 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 would the, would the um, uh, attention have been as great had... Luca just been healthy at the start of the playoffs. Like, oh, if he hadn't had if, like some, if some Brunson nice had gone games bananas in, the in that, yeah, like if he hadn't gone nuts in the playoffs, is 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 his signing being treated even even with the tampering included? Is his signing being treated with this amount of attention? I don't know. I like Brunson, so I'm not here saying like it's like you know some fool's gold or whatever what he was doing against the Jazz because it all seemed pretty repeatable, right? But like. I, it would. I I did think about that. Like if if um if the Mavs just didn't make the playoffs and his season ended in the regular season and then all this same stuff went down, what does what does the hoopla look like at that point? Well, and on top of that, they get to play this Utah team that has like some of the worst perimeter defense we've seen in the playoffs in a while. See that piece too. The I gotta say the on off stats with him when Luca didn't play. But Brunson played were pretty like pretty impressive. The only thing that was lower was the three point shooting, which makes sense because went from like forty one to thirty two or whatever. But I don't know. I really like Brunson. I value him. I think you can win with him. I was fine with it. I cannot wait. I'm going to do a little sub piece to your uh, Brunson thing. Sure. When does what week does the Watch out for the Julius Randle comeback year. Now that he has a real point guard, <laughs> who write who writes the first story? What kind of momentum does it right. get? What do you want from that story? When do we get the feature profile called Julius Randle never left? You know, like, it's like kind of just yeah. like feels like Julius Randle is just like, he heard everything that you said last year and he's back. I want, I want something halfway through the year where someone's like, you know what? This is what happens when you have a lot of left-handed people. They're naturally creative. This is why they're <laughs> so good. I want left-handed takes. I want like yeah. hardcore... This is well, why you know they that, play fun. You know that's been my dream forever. 
the oh, the right, all left handed the all left handed team was my that would have been one of my moves when I was a GM. I had I had a phase where I just wanted to get all the Spanish guys on one team, like both Gasols, <laughs> Calderon, Juan Carlos Navarro, Rudy Fernandez. I just wanted all of them together. The Armada, yeah, yeah, the Armada. And then the all lefty team was another one where it's just like just grab all the lefties, and it's just a complete. I can't believe no one's given you this gig yet, Bill. You know, with pitches like that, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sin. <laughs> Listen, Tim Connolly can come in and get nine million dollars a year to trade every asset of the team I promise except if, one. If you get a GM job, I will be your, I will carry your water on Twitter. Got another great idea from Bill Simmons. We need another great. You know, we traded seventeen <laughs> picks for Nikola Vucevic. You had to do it. Bill, uh, if you get a GM job, just let me just hang out. Just let me just come to the gym yeah. and hang out. Yeah, that's all that I got to do. You know? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I just wanted to have you in a jump su- an NBA <laughs> jumpsuit, just kind of <laughs> working with guys on the side. I want to yeah. add something to the Brunson thing, and it'll come up a little bit later in this pod, I'm sure. But this is, it's not a character, uh, not a great character. It's just a great, great trend. The trend of who are we bidding against? And this has come Mm. up a couple of times in some of these deals where I'm just like, so your dad and your dad worked for the Knicks. Who are you guys bidding against? Really? Yeah. Right? Like, what was the conversation at Thanksgiving going to be like if this didn't work out for the Knicks? So like in the end of the day, like couldn't the Knicks maybe have shaved a couple million dollars off of this? Well, I think they did descending salaries, which I thought was smart. My favorite. They did. They They front loaded it. Yeah. My favorite, who are they bidding against? I have co-winners. Uh, Marvin Bagley, who I liked, but three for 37. I just don't know who came in second place for the three for 37 with bags. <laughs> and then uh, the Gary Harris, two for 26. Second year, not guaranteed, but it's basically a one for 13. I just want to know who came in second on that yeah. one. Like, was he, did anyone have five for him? Four? So are they doing that because they want it to be a big... Trade chip? I don't know. I, I thought that was weird. Who are we bidding against this is a good game show, Chris. You wonder if when the agent like texts them the figure, they're like they wait for a correction. Yeah. Like, they wait for the like the, the, the they wait for the little asterisk tweet. You know what I mean? Is there like, a sorry, decimal? It wasn't th- sorry, it wasn't 13. I meant uh, <laughs> 1.3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 